everyone, hello, hello, and welcome once again to this beautiful, beautiful day the Creator has made for us. I hope you're so, so happy today, just like me, because it is Saturday, and once again, it's time for another episode of Family Art Adventures with me, Lance Cardinal. Yes, that's right, my name is Lance Cardinal. I come to you all the way from the Treaty 8 Big Stone Cree Nation, that's about three hours north of Edmonton, where I live right now. And that's right, I'm part of the Treaty 8 territory. Uh, my home community is Calling Lake, Alberta, which is about two hours north of there. Big shout out to all my friends and family in Calling Lake, all my mom and sister and all my nieces and nephew, all the way up in Wabasca, friends and family in Wabasca. Hello to everyone. Hope you're having a great week so far and I uh, hope you're staying as positive and uh, <laughs> in good spirits as you can while we are all here self-isolating in our homes. So, as always, I come here with you, to you guys with a um, the spirit of love and art and positivity and of course greetings so as always we're gonna do our nice Cree greeting that we always do every time I see you which is Tanse that's right the word is Tanse and that means hi in Cree so I want to hear you guys say it once again just like always on the count of three I'm gonna listen I want to hear you say Tanse on the count of three one two three Whoa, amazing, that's such a good job. Yes, Tanse. And then I say, Monando, Iguakia, which means I'm fine, how are you? So that's really great, you guys, amazing. So I'm sure you've been with us for the last few weeks. We've been doing some amazing crafting projects. Uh, of course, you remember we did our cute little butterfly project. These guys right here, butterflies. And we also worked on last week these really cute little, um, you know, little castles, little tops, so good job with that. We did a little bit of counting last week as well. Learned some creep uh, numbers, so that was really cool. And the first week we were here, we did these little guys, if you remember. I'm sure a lot of you do. Our little dancing, jigging puppets. Yeah, that's right. We had so many people send in their videos and their pictures of their little dancing, um, uh, I guess it would be <laughs> little Métis jigging dancers. And I, I loved seeing all your guys' work. So please keep sending in those pictures and those videos of your amazing work. And we're going to showcase them here on our uh, Family Art Adventure page. So we're going to be showing you a few really cool pieces that were sent in to me today uh, at the end of the program. So stay tuned because maybe your picture will be posted up here. All right, so that brings us to today's um, project and today's Cree word, which is Piwesis. That's right. That means small bird in Cree. So the word is Piwesis, which is small bird in Cree. And right here you can see right above the English word, we have the syllabics version of the word. Now this type of writing is an ancient Cree style of syllabic writing that was uh, created many, many generations ago. It's quite ancient and it, it does come before the Cree language. It's a translation of the Cree word and the English, uh, the Cree is a translation of the English word. So all you see here is the same thing, Piwesis, which means small bird in Cree. So I want to hear you guys say that word again. It's Piwesis. So on the count of three, one, two, Three, say it with me, Piwesis. Yes, good job you guys, that was so amazing. And that's our little Cree word lesson for the day, Piwesis, which means little small bird. And that's what we're working on today, is this really cool, oh, hey look, a piece of art. So we're gonna look at a piece of art today that's done by a very famous Ojibwe artist named Norval Morisot. Now this piece here you can see is called Loon Communications. You can see here, there's a whole bunch of birds, or piwesis, in his paintings as well. So he's got a very, very specific style, uh, Norval Morisot. So he comes all the way from Sandy Point Reserve in Ontario, Canada. So this is a beautiful piece by Norval Morisot with his version of piwesis birds, which of course are loons, which we see also on our dollar coin. And that's why we call it a loony. <laughs> All right, so that's our little uh, art lesson for the day and our featured artist of the day. And now let's get down to some art with you guys because I'm so excited you're here and I'm sure you're here with your family and friends or guardians or sisters and brothers or whoever else is in your home. Get them all together. The whole point of this project is to work as a team and to spend some time together and make some memories. Because like my cookum and my grandpa always said, making memories is the most important part of our lives on an everyday basis. So let's do some right now. 
All right, so today's craft project is miniature bird masks or Pewasis masks. So we're gonna make these out of some old egg cartons. Now, some of you have already seen the supply list we need, but I'm gonna go through it again with you guys. So what we're gonna need here is used paper egg cartons. I have some right here. So we get these at the store. These are the uh, paper egg cartons. I have the 18 pack here. And I cut mine up already to make some samples. Uh, but I didn't want to go out again and get some more because we have to stay home. So I'm going to recycle what I have. So you want to take the bottom of your egg carton, which will look something like this. And that's what we're going to need from that, okay? So we just need this many for you to make one mask, but one whole carton to make about maybe three or four masks. So that's cool. So we have that set aside. We also need black and orange paint and paint brushes. Here we have some black and some orange paint. And of course, I have as many paint brushes as I could possibly want in my lifetime, so that's good as well. Hope you have yours ready to go. We have now any colored paper or pattern paper. I have lots. Check this out. So many colors of the rainbow. <laughs> I love to color. I love colors. <laughs> Woo! All right, so we're gonna take some of these colors I have here, and we're gonna put them uh, to the side. So these are the colors I'm gonna use today. Maybe those, maybe different ones. I don't know. We go with the flow, our imaginations run wild. Plasticine or Play-Doh for a stand. This is so we can have our, our mask standing up inside of something. Now you have Play-Doh, you make some Play-Doh to put it inside. You can also use Styrofoam, just like that, to stand up our masks. Okay, so if you have Styrofoam at home, use some of that. If you don't, use paper. If you don't have paper, you can always use a bottle and stick it in like that. Okay? Lots of different ways to do it. There's always a way to make it work. Especially when we're all stuck at home right now. Okay, we also need bamboo skewers or thick dowels. So here we have bamboo skewers and some dowels, which we're gonna be using for the handle to hold up our masks, okay? So here we have three versions, a longer bamboo skewer, a shorter bamboo skewer, and a taller wooden dowel. Now these can be found at the dollar store or in your mom's kitchen cabinet. So check and ask if she has any of these lying around. I'm sure she already does. And a glue gun, we need a glue gun. Now if you're gonna be using a glue gun today, Plug it in now because it needs time to warm up. And don't forget, glue guns are very dangerous. The tip is very, very hot and you can burn. So if you don't feel comfortable using a glue gun, this is where your big brother or sister or your mom or your dad or your cookum or your uncle or whoever is taking care of you today, they can help you with the glue gun parts because we should always be ready to ask for help whenever we can because asking for help is important, right? And we need scissors, of course, right here. We have some scissors just like this. These are my favorite pair of scissors. I'm sure you have your own. Make sure they're the right size for you and you're very comfortable using them. And of course, if you want, you can put on feathers, twigs, straws, whatever you want to complete your mask at the end. That is up to you. All right. So we have some samples here of masks that I made today to show you what we're gonna be working on. So I have three versions of masks here. There's my twig version of a mask. This one is made of straws. Straws, straws, straws. Make what you want, make what you can. That's right. And this one, feathers, woo! I love using feathers, it's just like a Muppet or a puppet, and it makes it move really nicely. <laughs> dance, 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 dance. Feathers dance, dance, they dance, 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 they dance. <laughs> love that. As you guys know, I love to sing and have fun while I'm making crafts. And if you can, put on some music. That's some really nice, fun music. Something that will inspire you while you're working so you can stay motivated and have fun. All right. So let's begin. Step one, cut out the bird mask shape from an egg carton and trim it your own way. All right, so we grab our egg carton bottom. It's the top, we don't need that. We put that aside. We want the bottom. Now, your egg carton will look just like this. <laughs> Maybe not cut up. We want to get the top of the egg carton right about here. So the top will have two eyes and a nose. You want to look for that inside your egg carton as well. Two eyes and a nose. So keep that in mind. Now we cut out these two eyes and we cut out the nose as well. So this is where we need to get some help. All right, I'm going to start cutting mine right now. Uh -huh. 
This is the perfect cutting music. I'm gonna turn it up. I love to cut and cut and cut and cut. This is the way we make a craft all day. Cut, cut, cut. Let me cut. Make sure you are safe today. Mm -hmm. Woo! Okay. I have with me now, I've cut out two eyes and the top of one of the beaks. So as long as you have two eyes and a beak, you should be fine. All right. So now we put aside our pieces here. And what we said here is trim it your own way. There's lots of different ways you can make your egg carton base. Here's some samples right now. We have one that is with a pointy nose and a flat top, just like that. This one here has two pointy fronts and no top. And let's see, here's mine that I haven't trimmed yet. So we're gonna trim all the sides off and leave a pointy nose and a flat top. So take your scissors and cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut. Cut your shape so clearly. Cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, cut. That's the way you make your mask. Ah, there it is. Ready to go. So this is the base for my mask. All right, let's put everything aside. Keeping our place clean and tidy will make the job go much better. Now we're gonna go online and make sure we can see if anyone here is watching us as we go. Now if you have any questions about what we're doing, just give me a shout out on our Facebook page, on our live stream here on the AAW uh, Facebook page and we'll answer those questions for you and do a shout out if we can as well. All right, let's see who's online following along with our amazing project today. Now keep in mind if you're online, the internet is a little bit slow today, so uh, we probably will be doing um, having a little bit of trouble with the internet going in and out, back and forth. But be patient because the uh, you will be back online as quickly as possible. Woo! Okay, there we are. Yes, family fun art project time with me, and it looks like oh hey, everyone's online today. <laughs> hey Gladys Cardinal, it's mom. Hi mom, nice to see you. Jody Lynn. Hey Eris, hey Jody, how's it going you guys? I'm so happy to see you here today and I loved your artwork. It was really, really cool, Eris. Jody Funk Ashcroft. Hey Jody. Jeanette, hi. Linda Fate Lawrence, hello. Cousin Rhoda. Hey Rhoda, how's it going? I love you too. Ashley, hello, Linda, hello. Oh, Heather Sample. Ah, hey, Heather, how are you? I'm so happy you're here today. Thank you for joining me for this amazing day. All right, you guys, so once again, I do have the um, uh, Facebook page up, and so if you have any questions as we go along, put it there and I'll answer it for you. If you have any ideas, put them there as well, and maybe I'll do them live while we're working. Okay, so now, let's move on. We have our amazing mask face ready to go. What's our next step? Boom. Ah, step two. Make two holes for the eyes with a pencil or scissors. All right, so the next step we have to do is put two holes right there inside of our masks so we can see through the inside. All right, so I like to use a pencil um, or a pencil crayon. Now this can be a little bit dangerous, so if you need to ask your mom or dad or guardian to help you, that would be great. So take our pencil, just like this, find the middle of our hole, just like that, and poke it through. Just like that, one hole. And we twist it around to make it nice and smooth and do the other side. Oh, <laughs> just like that. Now, once I have the holes inside, I like to use a thicker pencil to make bigger holes so my eyes can see better. I have big eyes. There they are. <laughs> 
Now we're making miniature masks today. These aren't full size masks. They're little. So they're good for little tiny faces or maybe your doll or just for fun and for display. So we have two eye holes all done, ready to go. And we finished step two. All right, anyone have any questions? Hey there, Carm. It's nice to see you there. You're with your dad today. Hey there, Brock. Hey, Carm. Hope you're having a great day, you guys. Hope you're joining in and doing this craft as well. This is what this is all about today. So excited to be here as part of this video support series, which is just a great chance for us to do something fun, positive, be there for each other, have a good time, and <laughs> find something to do to distract us from our boredom. So here we are, ready to go. Let's see what our next step is. Step three glue bamboo skewer or thin wooden dowel to the back center of the mask. All right, it's time to make the holder. It's time to make a little holder for it. Make and make a little holder for it. All right, we have two different versions of holders here. We can use a long dowel like this, which you can find at a craft store. But if you don't have that, you can also use bamboo skewers. These are one of those things that mom always has in her drawer that she never uses, so feel free to ask for these. If you don't have these, don't worry about it. You can also use a pencil crayon, just like this, and put it on the back as well. So whatever you have in your house, whatever you have available to you, that's what you're gonna use. But for today, bamboo skewers it is. So we take our skewers and we put it through the back. Now. Some of your egg cartons have a little ledge or a lip there you can use to put through and to pierce all the way through, just like this. Now I like to put the pokey side up so that it's not pokey on the bottom down here. So we poke it through just like that. You see there? Pokey eyes, you can see it looks cool. That's right, we got it ready to go. Woo! This is great you guys, so this is the mask holder and the eyes, and wow, it's looking like a mask with a beak so far. Loving it. Alright, so now that that's in place, we take our glue and we glue it. Now remember what I said? Glue guns are very, very, very hot, so be very, very careful. Now we glue the top, just like this, and we glue the bottom, just like that, where it went through the paper. Now, if you can't go through the actual carton itself, the next best thing you can do is glue it just right to the back of the egg carton itself, to wherever you can find a spot and it'll hold in place. Now, it's really important with this that we let the glue dry before we use it anymore, okay? This is really important. So, we put it aside for a second and we let it cool off. Maybe about 30 seconds before it dries. So, any questions so far, you guys? Remember, if you have anything you want to add or any great ideas, I always want to hear from you. Follow me on my Facebook page, on Facebook, or else you can email me as well to lancecardinal75 at gmail.com with your amazing ideas, your art you've been doing at home, and maybe we'll feature it on our uh, little art wall here we're going to show later on. Okay, so I think we should be ready to go. This looks like it's pretty dry right now. Yes, quite solid. Everything's in place, and we're good to go. <laughs> All right, step four. Ah, it's time to paint. This is very important now. Preparation is most of the work when we're working with paint. So we're gonna put aside our extra egg carton pieces and we're gonna prepare our surface. Now, I like to wear something to protect my clothes. I'm wearing this beautiful ribbon shirt created for me by Patricia Pichet and she's an amazing indigenous designer. So she designed it for me. So I'm gonna cover it up with this wonderful apron. Now, mom and dad might have an apron uh, for the kitchen or for their workshop. So get one of these and cover your clothes. You can also ask dad for one of his old shirts and he'll put it on, uh, he'll bring it down, you can wear it to protect your clothes from the paint, okay? So we put on our apron just like this, tie it in the back. Hmm. Ah, there we go, I'm ready to go. Perfect, now I'm protected. Raise up my sleeves a little bit. Here we go. Now I'm sure you have a lot of rubber gloves at your house as well. If you want to wear gloves with your project, that is totally up to you. However you feel comfortable, it's your way, it's the best way. Okay, now we also want to put paper down in our area here to protect the table. So you can use newspaper, you can use fabric, or you can use whatever you have to put down on your table to protect the surface from paint spills. I like to use paper myself, then I can crumple it up, put it in the recycling when we're done. All right, we also need for our painting supplies some paper towel or napkins right over here. And 
a bucket of water. This is for keeping our brushes nice and fresh and cleaning them off when we're in between colors, okay? And we need our paint as well. So we have orange paint and a black paint, which I got at the craft store. I'm sure you have this lying around as well. And don't forget, you don't have to use black or orange. You can use whatever color you like, whatever colors inspires you because this is your art. And as I always say, it's never wrong, right? Okay. Now, I also have these cute little containers for holding paint that I got at the dollar store. These are little containers for putting in side dishes. Uh, so these are really great to use as well for um, putting a little paint in. Okay, so that's ready to go there. Hmm, what else do I need? Oh, a paintbrush. What can I use? Well, I have various sizes here I could use. Hmm, that looks good. What else? Hey, that looks perfect. All right, we're ready to go. Okay, everybody, here we go. Next step we have, we have all of our paint supplies ready to go. We're protecting our clothes and we're ready to start painting. Step five, paint the beak of the mask orange. Ah, this is the fun part. Now we get to decide how our face is gonna look. So we look in our mask right here and we see where is our beak for our bird. And I think right about there would be the perfect place for a beak. So we paint it with our orange paint. So we don't have a little container like this, don't worry about it. You can also use the other parts of the egg carton. These make perfect little holders for paint as well. So, we're gonna put a little bit of orange paint in this one just like this. Boop, 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 boop. Ah, <laughs> perfect. Now don't put too much, you don't wanna waste it. You can always add more if you run out. All right, now we take our paintbrush, we take our paint, and are you ready? It's time to paint! <laughs> That's right, time to paint our beak. Whoa, I love using colors. It brings everything right to life. Woo! Now, you don't have to have your beak like my beak. I chose it where I wanted to because that's how I felt. But always remember, it's up to you. If you want to have a little tiny beak, make yours small. If you want to have a long, long beak, make it long. It doesn't matter, it's up to you. But you know what? I'm happy with that. Check out my beak. Looks cool, hey guys? <laughs> awesome. All right. Now we take our brush and we rinse it off. Because now we're gonna paint with the black. Now I always like to use the bright colors first and the darker colors later. That way it's easier to paint and we don't make too many mistakes crossing over. All right, now it's time for some black. Black, black, let's put the paint in. Ooh, I love painting. It's always fun to make some colors. <laughs> All right, it's time to paint the black. So we have our black in our container ready to go. And now we're gonna paint everywhere you see on the inside black, but the inside only, not the outside, okay? Just the inside. So here we go. Da da dee dee, da dee 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 dee. Now don't worry about being too nice. Just get it on there as quickly and, and as efficiently as you can. Don't, don't forget all the feathers and all this stuff at the end. That's what makes it look fancy and exciting. So all we're doing right now is creating a nice dark black backdrop that'll help all of our colorful things pop. So, now if your stick came through, make sure to cover that stick up as well. We don't want to see that stick in the front. Coming along, you guys. I'm sure yours looks just as good as mine. And don't forget, if you have any questions or comments or just want to say hi and let me know where you're from, uh, what your name is, how old you are, that would be amazing. I'll give you a shout out as soon as I have a second. All right, I think we did it. Rinse off our brushes. Very, very important. Now, what's also important is never leave your brush in the water facing down. It makes all the ends get all bumpy and bent. So we rinse it out, tap it off, and use our napkin to brush the water off. Oh, it still has color on it. So rinse it again, tap off the water, and rinse on the paper towel. Clean brush, 
and they can go back in there. Okay, here we go, you guys. Oh my goodness, I painted my mask red, uh, black, and orange just like that. I hope yours looks good too. I'm sure it does, because you're an amazing artist. Okay, you guys. Now, here's a little trick I want to share with you. Sometimes waiting for paint to dry can be hard, but not if you have one of these. It's a hair dryer! That's right, we're gonna use this hair dryer to make it dry. We're gonna, we're gonna speed up the process. Okay, so, you got a little hair dryer at home you can use. Look at mine covered in paint. I use this all the time to dry my paint much faster. It's easy to do. You just turn it on low. And there you go. You can also dry your hair. You can also sing a song. I love to sing a song. I love to dry my hair and sing a song. <laughs> Make your butterflies laugh. <laughs> anyway, back to the paint. So this really helps sometimes to dry paint much faster and you can get on with your project much quicker. All right, looks great. Step six, place a painted mask in an empty bottle or tall glass to dry. This is very, very important. We need to dry the, 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 um, ma the bird mask now if we can. If you have a styrofoam base, you can always put it right inside the base like that and it'll have a place to dry. But don't worry if you don't, you can also use Play-Doh or plasticine or you can use an old bottle like this one. Put it right inside just like that. Perfect! Or a tall glass like this one. And I can go in there just like that. Yay! <laughs> It's just to keep it dry, so we're going to use the bottle. It seems to be the best way to hold it, just like that. Perfect. Alright, so we'll put that aside for now. We're all finished with our painting supplies, so we'll set them aside. And we're all done with our cleaning area, so we'll take that all away. Done! And since I'm done painting, I'm going to take off my, ma my apron. Perfect. Alright. Now, of course, if you don't have paper, colored paper at home, you can always use white paper and use markers and color in the, the feathers first, then cut out the patterns and make your own colors, whatever you want. You can also use magazines or fabric or whatever you want, and you can also use real feathers if you have it. <laughs> All right, so yellow feathers next. I'm gonna make little thin skinny ones, just like that. And how about some little tiny yellow ones? We're done! Oh my goodness, I love the feathers we made. I'm sure yours are just as good as well. Now we're going to go on to the uh, Facebook page and see if anyone has any questions or comments or concerns. Let's see. Hey there, Crystal. Nice to see you. Crystal Fayant. It's lots of fun. I hope you're doing it as well. It's nice to see you out there. Juanita Murphy. Hey there. How's it going, Juanita? Nice to meet you and see you. Hope you're having a great day just like I am. All right, we had uh, Doris Newman just joining us today and Shannon Dunfield. Hey, Shannon, nice to see you as well. Okay, you guys, we have our feathers. Ooh, so exciting. Look at all the feathers we have. It's time to put them on a bird. <laughs> okay, you guys know I love to sing, that's what I'm like. Glue the paper feathers carefully on the mask with a glue gun, adding as many layers and colors that you want. This is the fun part. We take our, our mask, just like this, and we add the feathers. Now, if this might be a difficult part, you might have to ask for some help. And remember, it's okay to ask for help because that's how we get things done easier, helping people. So if you can ever help someone, I suggest that you do. If you ever need help, please do that as well because in these trying times, having someone there for you to help you is so important and making sure that people you love know that you trust them and you want them to help you, right? Okay, so here we go. But if you can do it yourself, do it yourself, because, you know, be a wild and crazy artist. <laughs> okay, so let's start with our glue gun. We're gonna start with the front feathers. Hmm. Use your imagination, and let's use this one here. I have an orange piece. I'm gonna go right in the front, glue a little piece of glue on the front like that, and stick it right on the front, just like this. 
One feather. Easy as pie. Let's try that again. Now we're going to use the same feather, and I think we're going to go the opposite way, just like that. Little dab on the back. Don't put too much. And right. Oh! <laughs> look! Look at that! Look at my mask. It's got some feathers. I love to make a mask with you. I'm sure yours is beautiful too. <laughs> okay, let's put on some more feathers, guys. Let's do some red feathers. So we got one red feather. I'm gonna put it right in the front center of my mask, right about here. Now don't forget, guys, there's no rules to this. You do what you want, how you want. It's your art, you create it, okay? Perfect, okay, what else? Big yellow ones, hmm. Let's go up high like that on the back. So now that we have the front made, we can start putting them on the back of these feathers too, to hold them in place. Actually, you know what? No. I'm gonna go right on the front, right about there. <laughs> Looks so cool! Now another one. Now if you don't have glue gun, you can always use regular glue, white glue. It might take a little bit longer, I mean a little bit more messy, but you know what? Messy is part of the fun of creating art, so don't worry about that too much. There we go, looking good. Now we're gonna add some smaller pieces as well to the front, maybe red smaller ones. Right there, looks great. And one more. Right there. I love it so far! Looks so good! I'm so proud of myself. Now we're gonna do something a little bit further to make our mask look way bigger than it really is. Glue a little bit there, just like that. Perfect. And one more on the other side. Just like this. What do you think so far, guys? Do you love it? Let me know in the comments if you guys are liking my mask so far. <laughs> All right, here we go. Now, what we're gonna do next is put some feathers on the sides. Now, we wanna make some feathers come out the sides so it's a little bit more interesting, just like that, okay? Pick our big orange ones again and start on the back. Just like that. One. Next. Oops. <laughs> and two. Just like that. Love it. <laughs> All right, let's get some more reds on the sides here so we can have it. Just like the top, we keep adding and adding as much as we want until it feels like it's right for us. There it is! <laughs> so cool! Now some yellow at the sides as well. I don't know about you guys, but I got glue gun strings all over the place. It's just flying everywhere. That's just how it's supposed to be though. Creating art is messy, that's for sure. Wow, check it out! What do you guys think? <laughs> I'm loving my mask so far. It is so bright and so much fun. Love it. How do you love your mask? I think that mine looks amazing. What do you think? Everything you make will be great. Don't forget, it's up to you. So that's it's never a mistake. <laughs> All right, so we're right here with our mask. We got our wonderful little feathers. You can see through the inside. Hmm, what else can we do to make this look incredible? Well, you know what? The inside, where the eyes are, Maybe we can add some circles. If you feel like you're comfortable enough to paint them in, go ahead and paint, but you can also use paper. Just like this. Take some yellow. Fold it in half. 
to fold it again, and then make a circle. Half a circle. Just like that. And when you open it up, it'll be a full circle. But we want to make another circle in the inside so we can glue it on the inside to make the eye. Now there it is, just like that. And when we open it, oh, a full circle. Maybe even two, yes. Two full circles. Now this is a little bit more difficult, so if you need some help with this, what do we do? We ask for help, that's right. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of glue on the inside of our, our eyes here and put them in. One. Ooh. There it is, one eye. We're going to call this bird, Birdie One Eye. And the second eye goes in just like that. my mask! I love it! Oh, 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 I love my mask. It's so much fun. I hope yours looks just as good as mine. I'm sure it does because you're amazing. Now our next step, after we've done that, let's get back on our slideshow. Ah! Adding extra things. Now here it says, add extras like feathers or twigs or straws and make it your own. Now, I'm sure you saw these samples before, but we'll bring it back in again. All of our paper scraps to the side for now. Ooh. All right, we have some samples here that I made earlier that you can see. So if you want, you can also put feathers on your mask. So I had to use paper and feathers and I didn't paint it black. I painted it blue, just like that. So that's one way. What about straws? You can also use straws in the back of your mask once it's glued. Just glue them in the back just like that and it looks really, really cool. Or you can go with twigs and sticks. Make it a little bit more organic out of twigs you can find when you go for a nature walk with your family. So this is more like an owl. Uh, with the, and I use other parts of the egg carton for the sides. So again, it, there's no wrong way to make these. Use your imagination. Whatever you think is the best thing that you want to do, that is correct. Now we're going to add our new feather friend to our amazing display. And look! Wow! Ah! Awesome! I can't wait to see what your guys look like. Now, you can use um, styrofoam whatever you want to make a base. I get to use this one, uh, styrofoam like this. It's easier to stick it in and it makes it stay as long as you want. Uh, they're available at the dollar store or Michaels. You can find them there. But if not, you can use plastic seed, like I said, or decorate a cute bottle. Or put it inside a plant, like my butterflies. So that's really, really cool. Put those right there so we can see them. Perfect. All right, now you can also paint the base of your, your mask uh, black as well. So you see here, I painted my stick black just to make it look a little bit more neat and tidy. That is totally up to you. So there's our beautiful masks we have done today. And I know yours are just as good. And of course, we did it! <laughs> good job, everyone. I'm so proud of you. And I'm so happy you were here today to be with me to make this incredible fun craft. It's been such a pleasure and an honor and a big shout out of thanks to the IAAW group for these amazing support video series. They're so much fun and I hope you've had fun today as well. All right, next on our list we have the Artist Corner. Oh my goodness, I love this part. So, on this part we're going to be looking at different artists who send in their work. Now, the Artist Corner is um, pictures that you did and you sent in of your work. So let's look at it now. The first one we have was made by Sydney, who's nine years old, and she comes from Edmonton, Alberta, and she made these beautiful butterflies that we did last week. Oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. And some enchanted castles. Good job, Sydney. Those look really, really great. Oh, Shannon, Carmela, and Mark, a wonderful family. Hey, Carm, we hope they're with your dad today. Hope you're having a great day. But this was done by Shannon, Carmela, and Mark, and they're from Edmonton, Alberta, and they made their beautiful castles as well. Good job, guys. Great team effort. Oh, 
one, this little Eris. Hello, Eris, three years old. She's so adorable and such a great little artist. Check out her beautiful little butterflies from last week's project. So, so amazing. Good job, Eris. She's three years old from Edmonton, Alberta. Awesome job. So if you want to have your art featured here, send it to me here at my Facebook page, Lance Cardinal, or you can also email me at lancecardinal 75 at gmail.com, and uh, I'll possibly put it up and be one of our featured artists in our gallery next week, which I hope you'll be back for, because we're going to do this all over again. All right, you guys, well, thank you so much. This has been the Family Art Adventures with me, Lance Cardinal. I'm so happy you were here. It was such a pleasure to meet you. Hope to see you all again next week for some more family fun. And as always, may the Creator watch over you as long as the sun shines, the grass grows, and the river flows. <laughs>